hello dear it's another beautiful exchange service at the lighthouse christian archery center we trust that you had a wonderful time on sunday i can guarantee you that today you're going to have another amazing time we implore you to leave your questions in the comment section and also don't forget to share this link with your friends we want you to share this gospel with people uh right about now we'll be welcoming the Ispragas leaders in a powerful worship session see you later
help my eyes to the things unseen. Show me how to love like you have loved me. Come on, we sing together. Break my heart for what breaks yours. Break my heart for what breaks yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory be to our God. It's another beautiful Wednesday evening and welcome to our beautiful exchange service right here from the city of Lagos, Nigeria. I'd like to ask how your day, uh, for those of us who are in this time zone, I would say, how is your day? And for those of us who are still, uh, our day is still ongoing, uh, we pray uh, for you, as we, we ask from you, how is your day going? And we pray for everyone that this day uh, and this week, which uh, lead us to the Easter celebration, will be a time of um, absolute renewal, absolute refreshing for each and every one of us. We like to say happy Easter uh, in advance. Uh, the Easter message still remains the same. It helps us to understand the good news of God's grace, his love, his mercy, his hope for us, uh, his joy. Uh, we understand through this week in the Christian calendar is a passion week. We understand what forgiveness is all about and the peace that the coming of Jesus and his death on the cross has brought to humanity. Easter, uh, he endures or, or, or enforces the enduring victory over spiritual death, sickness, and poverty, and it makes the new creation species possible in God because of the unsearchable riches of the Christ Jesus our Lord. We thank God for the gift of Jesus. We thank God for what He is to us, to humanity. We thank God because that gift is what we are celebrating uh, during this Easter period. And for us in the Lighthouse, we have um, EFC, which we call Easter Faith Conference. Uh, it's just to celebrate the cornerstone of our faith. Uh, we celebrate joyfully what God's gift to humanity, the gift of Jesus. Um, we saw, or we have seen, or we're still seeing in his word, his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, and his, his statutory position. Uh, which gives us, I mean, gives us an insight into the riches of God. So we have this conference every year. And so from this Good Friday, the 2nd of April, uh, till Sunday, the 4th of April, is going to be an exciting time. You can register, pre-register for those who like to uh, attend or uh, on-site. If you want to do that online, I mean, you still have to register. So um, right there on your screen or, or at the end of this service tonight, you see the registration link in display. So we are running on the team. Interestingly, this year, we are running on the team, Jesus, Jesus. So we'd like you to come and celebrate this Easter with us. Come with your family, friends, colleagues. Let's, let's just, as we sit on the anointed music minister, the word of God, uh, Easter stage play, 
Uh, it promises to be uh, an encounter with Jesus. And of course, we believe him for healing for those who are sick. We believe him for salvation for those who, who, who need uh, the acceptance of that great sacrifice in, in their lives. So we'd like to specially invite you to EFC 2021. Um, it's going to just be, and I look forward personally uh, to welcoming you into that service. We've been talking about the love of God. And as we think through this week, um, in the past few weeks, we've talked about this love and that for us who are redeemed, uh, we were doomed, but we were redeemed. Uh, he has quickened us. He has imparted into our lives his own very nature. 2 Corinthians 5.17 has admonished us or rather showed it to us clearly that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. So all things are of God. He has made us a new creation in him. And once we have, we come into him, Romans 5.5 5 says, hope does not make us shame. Because the love of God has been shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit that he has given us. Verse 8 of Romans 5 says, God has commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. We thank God for the gift of Jesus. I mean, the Bible says, thank God for these unspeakable gifts. 2 Corinthians 9.15 is an unspeakable gift. We thank God for the cross, but we thank God also for the resurrection and the ascension. And today we are seated with him in heavenly places far above principalities and powers. So this love, Paul wrote, should be our hymn. In 1 Corinthians 14, 1, he said, make this love your hymn. Make it something that, that you live in. You live in the love of God. Uh, a lot of the challenges that we have in our lives, uh, in, in, not in our lives now, but in the world generally, uh, is as a result of hatred for one another. But when we, have, when we just choose that the love of God should be the motivating factor, it helps us to be able to overcome the hatred that we see all around us today. So he said, let love be that beautiful price for which you run with. That's what one translation of 1 Corinthians 14, 1 says. It, it, it should be something that, that we live in, something that, um, that comes out of us. And you may ask, like we said, that how did we come to this? But why is love the greatest? I mean, we read it last week. Wednesday during the service that it says there are three things that abide, hope, love, and faith. He said, but the greatest of those three, 1 Corinthians 13, 13, is love. If love is the greatest, why we hate be? So we have this equation that we highlighted last week, which I want to also remind us as we begin today's service, that if X equals to Y, and then Y equals to X, and if God, it simply means if God equals to love, and then love equals to God, it means you cannot separate uh, this nature from God. For God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So the nature of God, is the nature of love. God is a good God. Good is love. So that, that nature resides in God. And anyone who is identified with God through the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, anyone who identifies with that sacrifice, the nature of the new creation in Christ Jesus is the nature of love, the nature of God. And love has been imparted into us. And we said that the truth is, God is love. You can't separate love from God. And secondly, we said, even our faith that we proclaim will only walk through love. True love. Galatians 5, 4. This hope that we have walks by love. The faith that we have walks by love. So we also said last 
Wednesday that not walking in love simply means not walking in God. And we should make love. I mean, in fact, our growth, our spiritual growth, I believe one of the indices for that growth is how much the love of God has been matured or perfected in us. And we said lastly, lastly, that not, nothing will profit us unless it is done from the motive of God's love. I mean, uh, there, there is this saying, which I also uh, are believing that you can give eh, without loving. So you can give something literally to people. Not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily mean that you love them. Maybe by virtue of position that they occupy or by virtue of favor that you desire from them, you just want to give them a gift. Or you just, by reason of their position, by reason of their uh, maybe authority that they exercise, you just want to give. But there is no way if you love someone, you will give. God loved the world and then he gave. So, I mean, God didn't hate the world. No, he loves the world. And that's the reason. So, you cannot love without giving. You can't love someone without giving. You can't love God without reaching out to fellow human beings. Praise the Lord. So what is this love? I think we tried to describe it last week that the best definition you can give about this love is that God is love. God is love. And today, I want us to look at the characteristics of this love. I think if we can do that, and then as we celebrate Easter, we'll, we'll be able to look at the life of Jesus again. We'll look at the life, the cross that led to his, his death. And then um, what happened, then the resurrection and then the ascension. And then when he completed the work of redemption by going to the Father, he started to speak position. He, he sits, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And the Bible says in Hebrews 7.25, he's making intercession for us and he's able to say to the uttermost. Uh, there's no other scriptural reference that will help us to understand this characteristic. Uh, it, it's, it's just 1 Corinthians 13, because this love is the greatest gift. And 1 Corinthians 14, 1, he said, we should pursue this kind of love. What does he say? 1 Corinthians 13, um, I, I read, I take my reading from verse 4. He said, this kind of love, the God kind of love, maybe that, that's how I would want us to read it tonight. So he says, love suffers long and is kind. But let's read it from this way. God's kind of love suffers long and is kind. God's kind of love is patient. And patient with oneself, patient with other people. Uh, God's kind of love is accommodating. God's kind of love is expansive. So God's kind of love endures long and is patient. Uh, for us as human beings in this part of eternity, the tendency for any one of us to be patient is very high. But as we yield ourselves to this nature of God, it helps us. And you know that the Holy Spirit, you know, after our salvation experience, the Holy Spirit is living in us. He said we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So he resides in our human spirit. And is there not just to occupy a space? John 14, 26 gives us an understanding that it has a sevenfold dimension in our lives. If you read 14, 26 and the Amplified, it says he is our comforter. Then he puts it in the comma. He is our helper. He is our intercessor. He is our standby. He, it's our he, he, it's our it's, it's our comforter, and you have it all there, the strengthener. So there is a sevenfold dimension of his ministry. And so as we yield to him, he helps us to also walk in that dimension, that he helps us to develop capacity to accept, capacity to tolerate, capacity to see beyond the moment. God's kind of love is gracious. 
God's kind of love is kind. I mean, it used to be in the Old Testament that a tooth for a tooth and eye for an eye. But in the New Testament, God's kind of love is accommodating. You know, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 22, verses 38 to 40, he was summarizing the whole law to those Jews at that time because they, they were holding on to the tenets of the Ten Commandments. And he summarized it into two. And it's interesting to note that the first five, the first five of the Ten Commandments has to do with man's relationship with God. And then the last part, the five, has to do with man's relationship with the fellow human being. So Jesus summarizing it, he said, well, upon this sum two summary, that hangs the whole of Genesis up till uh, the end of uh, Malachi. And then into the gospel I can. He said, let me just give you the whole testament, Genesis to Malachi. He said, this is the summary of all that you have done. He said, thou shall love, or you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. So it, it, that took care of the first five uh, listing in the commandment, ten commandments that God gave to Moses. And God realized, God himself knew ahead of time that man in his flesh can never obey those Ten Commandments. But the requirement of the law is fulfilled in us today because we have the Holy Spirit who dwells in us as our teacher, as our counselor, as our comforter, as our strengthener, as our standby. And as we yield to him, it helps us to be able to love the Lord our God. So it, it has to do with our relationship, in our personal relationship, that nature that has been imparted into us, we give him room for expression. And in Galatians 5.22, he was talking about if the Holy Spirit truly resides in us, these are the fruits that he will bear in our life. And interestingly, the first of those fruits is love. Love. Joy is another, peace is another, self-control is another, temperance is another, long-suffering is another. So God's kind of love, it gives, it endures long and it's patient because God is love. I mean, if you look at our world today, uh, the sacrifice has been made. Jesus has gone to the cross. He's not going to go back to the cross. The sacrifice for sin has been made. But we still have so many people who are not acknowledging that. And God has not withdrawn his love. Because his love is everlasting. From everlasting to everlasting, his love is everlasting. That's the best way to put it in English language. So God's kind of love, uh, like we read here, he suffers long and he's kind. And he says, this kind of love, God's kind of love, it is generous. Is of a generous disposition. Is of a generous disposition. In the time of challenges, God's kind of love is still very generous. That's why you read some, something like um, an encouragement from Paul the Apostles to the Hebrews believers in Hebrews chapter 13, in, in verses 5 and 6. He said, For he has said, He will never leave you nor forsake you. He says, So that we may boldly say, The Lord is our helper. There is nothing any man can do to us. So that kind, God's kind of love is kind. It's kind. In the face of challenges, when we can't figure things out, a lot of people feel that God has forsaken them. No. In that midst, his love is everlasting. God doesn't bail out on people. And God is not a wicked God. David had an insight in Psalm 73, verse 1. He said, truly, God is good. In another place, he said, God is good, and he only does good. So, it's, it's, um, it's essential that no matter the challenges of life, we must not put ourselves in, condemn in the condemnation arena. Uh, our faith walk. We walk when we see it from the perspective of the love of God. Love of God. So let's read further. He said, this kind of love, God's kind of love does not envy. It doesn't envy. I mean, 
There is no feeling of being discontented. There is no resentful. It's not aroused by uh, someone is making progress and I'm not making progress. I had a statement made by someone um, in some few days back, and the person was saying that sometimes uh, you find yourself in the midst of people who don't like you, and what they are showing forth is envy, jealousy, not evangelism, envy and jealousy. So, hey, but God's kind of love is not like that. God's kind of love rejoices. He doesn't wish that he has something that somebody else possesses. So, we need to understand this that as we yield ourselves, I said this to people a lot. I said, well, God cannot force himself on us. We will have to respond to his love. So God's kind of love is not envious. It's not envious. Anywhere you see envy, James rule, and you will find evil works there. You will find backbiting there. You will find discontentment there. You probably, at the end of the day, when envy has its full work, you will find bitterness. You will find hatred. And all those things will lead to every form of evil work. Some have even killed fellow human beings. They've killed them over being envious that, oh, if they cut their life short, yeah, they will not enjoy that for that. But the truth is that that person will also not enjoy because it doesn't belong to them. So, but God's kind of love is never envious. And the challenge that I want to throw to us today as we celebrate Easter is that we should check our hearts. We should be perfected in God's love. We should be established in God's love. We should be matured in God's love. We should be perfect in God's love. 1 John 4, 18 says that. He said, perfect love. The God's kind of love drives out fear. It drives out envy. Matthew 5, 48 says, be ye therefore perfect even as your heavenly father is perfect. I've seen this a lot in our world. When people choose envy over celebrating with other people, it invariably it ruins their life. As we preach this tonight, I can see people that I know who, because of envy, they've left their primary uh, places in life. The things that is working for them stopped working for them just because they put their eyes on what is working in the life of other people at the expense or at the detriment or what God has blessed them. I will say this in closing to you tonight. You have what it takes to succeed with your life. The Bible says in Ephesians 1, 3, it said, God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So every spiritual blessing, all things that pertain to life and godliness, has been given to you. There's no need to envy. He said, even for concerning our gift, 1 Peter 4.10 talks about it. He said, everyone, we are stewards of the manifest grace of God. To one, he has given the gift of encouragement to one that he has given. But let everyone just be, recognize it and then walk with what we have been given with. There's no one who is not gifted in life. And there is no one who doesn't have Equal time, talent, treasure, opportunity. But what happens in life is that we have a lot of people who don't recognize what they have been given. A lot of people who tend to put their hands at the hand of the heart. A lot of people who see the greens or the, the greenery in other people's lives and then they are envious of it, not even knowing that Everyone that you see that something is working for one way or the other is because they have made the decision to harness what God has put on the inside of them. Please, don't be the one to always bring out a hand of judgment against other people. It's a sign of envy. Love doesn't suggest, when you choose the way of love, it does not suggest that you are weak. It doesn't even suggest that you are a fool. It doesn't suggest that you are not sure or you are not firm or you are not convinced about what God has given you. You have just chosen to stand 
in the liberty where God has made you free. Every human being is unique. Every human being is, is different. But when we embrace the love of God, His love control our lives. Please understand, we can never do anything outside the way of law. We cannot succeed in our family out of the way of law. We can't succeed in our businesses out of the way of love. Um, we can't succeed as a nation. And whichever nation that you live in, when people don't value the lives of other people, it leads to anarchy. It leads to chaos. It leads to hatred. It, it leads to ethnic bias or biases. It leads to all forms of um, taking things forcefully with an advice as we come because when people don't choose the way of love, hatred reigns, bitterness reigns, evil reigns, and then you find that the, the, the general society is not stable. My prayer for us today as we celebrate Easter is that we will all be perfected in this God kind of love. We will continue next week. But again, I'd like to say to you, happy Easter in advance. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for staying with us. We believe that you have been impacted by God's word and the message that we have received. Right now, we'll be taking our tithes and offerings. We want to say a big thank you for your donations and goodwill towards the ministry. Your donations help us reach a large number of people across the world. To give, you can use any of the mediums being displayed on the screen right now. All right, we'll be joining the service right now. Don't forget, pull up your pen, your paper, and take down notes as we continue. Let us pray. Father, we want to say thank you. Thank you for this week, this passion week, that we've been, been rich on the life, burial, death, resurrection and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the victory that you have given us over spiritual death, poverty, and sickness. And Lord, as we celebrate Easter this weekend, I ask by the power of your spirit that someone will begin a new relationship with you. Someone will be restored in their relationship with you. Someone's body will be healed of sickness ravaging their bodies. Someone will be delivered from worry and anxiety of life. Someone, Lord, will be translated in, in, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your dear son. Thank you for your blessing over everyone, over every household. Thank you, Lord, because the true meaning of Easter will be revealed in our hearts. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your grace. For we have prayed with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining in our service tonight. Thank you for everyone who is also giving so that we can preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for your commitment in giving. And I will say to you, just like Apostle Paul wrote, he said, God is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love. He says, do not be weary, Galatians 6, 9, do not be weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap only on one condition, if you faint not. And don't forget to join us uh, for this Easter weekend. I know Easter usually uh, is a low-key celebration, but we can gather around that name, the name of Jesus, as we uh, go into our Easter faith conference. It's going to be an awesome time, teaching in the Word of God, stage play, spoken word, the ministry of the mystery, and above all, creating an atmosphere for the move of the Holy Spirit. Be part of it. Our speakers are ready. Our, our team, uh, we're ready in the lighthouse to receive you both online and on-site. And as we celebrate this Easter, you can come along with your family, friends. Let's celebrate the risen Jesus. He's living in our hearts today. He's no more on the cross. And, but his manifest presence, manifest power to ensure that people are delivered from spiritual death. We have an enriching relationship with God. People are delivered from sicknesses. 
an oppression which is of the devil. He said, how God anointed Acts 10, 38, Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good, healing, not, 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 not inflicting, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. It simply suggests that oppression, sickness are the works of the devil. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the deliverer. We can have this and every other uh, learning during this Easter Faith Conference. God bless you. From all of us, from Lighthouse, Lagos, Nigeria, we say have a wonderful evening. Shalom in all your realm. God bless you. Amen. 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 <music>